All right. See, there's three people in so far. Got Periscope on. I got Facebook on and have some here in Zoom. So praise the Lord, everybody. You don't have to mute yourself if you don't want to. I like to see you. Now who's this talking? We're on. We're on. I think I got Crystal on. Uh, I don't know who else is on. I just see iPhone. I don't know who that is. But if you want to see me, just enable your camera for those that are on Zoom. This is our first time doing it, so I'm going to give you all a chance to uh, get in, get acquainted for a hot second. And then we're going to go into it. All right. Than anybody by far. And uh, the news, the reporters, the All right, I see Sister Holloway is on. Whoever this is, no, of course not. I do not know Turkey. Uh, all right, so the ones that I've got, because we only have so much time to be on here. I want to go to Joel to start us off. It is in New York. And I spoke with uh, the governor about If you that. have a TV on in the background, please mute it or mute yourself. Very happy. Hard not to be happy with the job we're doing, that I can tell you. Throughout this national emergency, I hear the president in the background, so if that's you, please mute the TV or mute your device. They are amazing people, and they become, I don't know. All right. We're going to look at Joel, going to the sec Joel, or Joel, whichever one you want to use. Go to the second verse, second chapter, rather. We're going to start at the 28th verse says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants uh, and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to still come before your people, Lord, even over the internet, Lord Jesus, and over the airways, Lord. We ask you right now, Lord, to let your word go forth. Let us gain, Lord, understanding, Lord Jesus, understanding of what's happening right now, Lord, and as what the church should be doing right now, Lord, for we see, Lord, that you are fulfilling, Lord, the prophecy that is in your word, Lord Jesus. We see the things that are coming forth, Lord. Help us, Lord, to read your word and prepare ourselves for your soon return hallelujah we ask you to do these blessings and all blessings in jesus name amen all right so we're going to continue in first john we're going to go to first john the last two verses of the second chapter and hopefully we can work up to verse 10 if you can imagine this is slightly weird a little bit teaching Bible class and you have nobody in front of you but the computers <laughs> all right uh, but again continuing in first John 
28th verse says, and now little children abide in him. We have been talking about abiding in God, abiding in Christ, abiding in Jesus. And when you abide in Jesus, there is no sin because he is light. And there, when there is light, there is no darkness. And when you're abiding in Jesus, no sin can operate. No sin can be found. So we're talking still about abiding in him. All right. Again, and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If we're constantly abiding in Christ, it doesn't mean that you're not sinning because we know we're in the flesh. We can slip up, but you're striving not to. You're striving not to sin. You're striving to be upright. You're striving to be obedient. You're striving to do the things that God would have you to do. So with that, as long as you're doing that, when he shall appear, you'll have the confidence that nothing is going to hold you back. Hallelujah. And not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that his right, that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Those that are born of God walk in righteousness. His seed, if you will, is in us that helps us to be like him. That seed, if you will, is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes to lead us and to guide us into all truth. It carries us from earth to glory. That's what we need. That's why it's so pertinent that we have the Holy Ghost, as well as having the baptism in Jesus' name, because your baptism in Jesus' name is the key to get you into heaven. That Hey, Tiffany, it is the key to get you into heaven. If you don't have the name of Jesus, you cannot get in. As I've said a few times, whether you heard me on Bible class or you've been here and seen me in Sunday school or just even on Sunday, nobody can come into the Hulk house if you don't have the Hulk name. You don't get a key. So those of us that have the name of Jesus, we have the key to get into the kingdom of God. All right. Now we're going to start in chapter three of first John. Behold, what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, many members in particular. That's why we are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So this is what we're looking forward to. And with the climate that the world is in right now, we are closer than ever before. Just think about it. The world has been plagued with COVID-19 or Corona. I know we've been talking about it for the last two, three weeks, but it's what we're in. You have locusts over in, in Africa and you have people dying everywhere. The hardest hit right now is Italy and folks are dying. This is our wake up call church. This is our wake up call. This is our time. Now keep hearing, get right church and let's go home. Cause the song says none but the righteous self. She God, we need to get it together. We Amen. have to get it together. It's time. We need to be on our faces. We need to be humbling ourselves. We need to be praying. We need to be seeking God's face. And we need to be spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ now more than ever. All right. Now, beloved, now we the sons of God and does not yet appear what we shall be. We are looking to that blessed hope. What we shall be, we shall be like him. Our our process right now, the process of salvation is for us to get into glory without problem without hindrance we can't get in with spot on wrinkle or any such thing so we're striving to be clean we're striving to walk upright we're striving to live righteous we're striving to live holy because if he doesn't come soon even the very elect is going to be struggling to get in paraphrasing the very elect is going to be struggling to get in so but we have this blessed hope what is the hope that we shall be like him we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. 
How is he right now? Well, when he left here, the last time he was here, he went back to the father. He went back to the spirit form. He went back to being God. So when we go, we're going to see him in spirit form. We will be there. Our souls will be there. We'll be seeing him and we will be like him. We won't be him. We won't have that authority that he has. We'll never be God. But we will see him as he is in all of his glory. We'll be able this time to see him face to face. We'll be able to talk to him face to face. We'll be able to sit at his feet and ask all the questions that we can ever think of that we needed answered. We don't know. Maybe when, by the time we see him, we'll get all the answers just by looking at him. We don't know. But we shall see him as he is because we're going to be like him. We can't see him now. He had to veil himself in flesh because seeing him in all his glory would have blown our minds. In my mind, my imagination is very vast. In my mind, if we had looked on Christ as he is now, our heads would have exploded. That's just how I feel. But, <laughs> but we can't see him as he is right now because we can't contain it. We cannot contain his glory. He can only give us so much. All right. But when we get there, we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope, verse three, in him purifieth himself. When you have that hope, you're striving to constantly stay clean. Uh, even as he is pure, be ye holy, even as I am holy. This, this is what we're trying. This is what we're striving for. This is what we're doing. All right. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now, anytime you have a word with the E-T-H, it is continuous. And what we don't want is for us to be in sin continually. That's why we're striving for perfection. This is why we're striving to be holy. This is why we strive to walk up right before him. This is a walk. This is a process. It does not happen overnight. All right? It can be done. Look at Abraham. Uh, God gave him more righteousness because of his uprightness. Look at uh, Enoch. We talked about that Sunday. Enoch was able to walk away with God because of his faith. He pleased God. Job pleased God. We have to please God. In order to make it in, we have to please God with our lives, with our service to him. And again, as Evangelist Barney even stated, wherever you go is your uttermost parts of the earth. It is our job to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not just for us to learn it here and keep it here. These four walls are going to cease to exist after a while. I have in my head, I'm hearing Bishop Ellis right now singing, uh, preaching in the land's going to soon be over because the time is drawing nigh because it is. The time is winding up so quickly. We would have never thought, I didn't think that I would see the things that are happening now. A lot of people my age are starting to say that. We didn't think that we were going to see this because we thought when this starts happening, we're either going to be very old in age or the Lord's going to have already come. But that's not what it is. We're here. That means those of us that are in the ministry have to now be more bold now than ever to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and tell the world who Jesus is. Tell them that they have to be saved. Tell them that they have to be baptized in Jesus' name. Tell them that they have to receive the Holy Ghost. And then teach them how to walk up right before him. Because it doesn't just stop at baptism and infilling of the Holy Ghost. It never has. There's a whole process to salvation. All right? So with that, we have to remember that we cannot stay in sin. Again, if you go back to um, the first chapter, if we say that we have fellowship in him and walk in darkness, this is 1 John 1 and 6, we lie and do not the truth. We cannot say that we are in Christ when we're constantly walking in sin. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. That's not how you get in. That's not how you please God. We are supposed to be striving again to perfection. Continuing on, whosoever committeth, back in chapter 3, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. God came in flesh in order to take away our sins. He could not do it in spirit form because we needed blood. Therefore... As we hear every Easter, God stepped off his throne, robed himself in flesh, 
hung on a cross to shed his blood for us. Just cutting through the field right now because I don't have a whole lot of time. But we, we, he was manifest. He was revealed to us in flesh so that he could save us. Again, verse 5, it says, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. We needed blood for that. And in him is no sin. Now, the man that knew no sin took on our sin and became a curse for us to hang on the cross. Because to hang on a tree, that means you were cursed. And he could not have been the curse if he did not take on our sins. So, he had to come in flesh. I know a lot of times people say, God cannot die. We know that because in spirit, he cannot die. That's why he got in flesh. If we get to verse 16, hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life. The only way he can lay down his life is if he got in flesh. But I'm moving ahead of myself. All right. Um, going to verse 6. Whosoever abideth continually, abideth in him, sinneth not. You don't continue to sin. You do not continue to sin. If you abide in him, if you continue to abide in him, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. You haven't seen him, you haven't experienced him, and you do not know him. If you continue in sin, it's pretty clear right there. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Again, our example is Abraham. When God told him to get up and walk, he got up and started walking. He didn't ask any questions. It doesn't say in the Bible that he did. He didn't question God. The only time we see where he questioned God was when the Lord warned him about what was going to happen in Sodom and Gomorrah. And he had all of these per adventure. There were five per adventure, 10 and so on and so forth. I'm going a bit backwards, but you get what I'm saying. The only time we saw him question God was at that time. And even when it came down to Sarah being uh, pregnant and giving birth at their age. We would be asking the same questions if it was us seeing out in the, in our 90s and our hundreds giving birth. We think that's a bit crazy because surely, as Sarah said, that our time has passed. But if we walk upright in him, if we are righteous, he will impute unto us righteousness such as he did Abraham. All right. Verse 8, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. If you're constantly sinning, you're of the devil. You're not of God. If you're constantly sinning, if you're dwelling in sin, if you're in that group that sinneth, you're not in God. You are of the devil, because the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. How? Through his blood, through his name. Things are broken, things are changed because of the blood of Jesus. He had to shed blood in order to cover our sins, in order to wipe away the, uh, the, the results of sin. The wages of sin is death. So we needed his blood. That's how he's going to triumph over it. We, we triumph through the blood. If you you got noise behind you. Please mute yourself. Thank you. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. So that means whosoever is led that born means whosoever is led of God cannot sin. If you're led of God, he's not going to lead you into sin. A lot of times we sin because of this. This is our issue. This is our infirmity, our flesh. But if you're being led of God, he's not going to lead you to sin. Because he is born of God or he is led of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. In this, that we're led of God, we are revealed to the world and the children of the devil. Those that are not, those that are in darkness, they are also revealed. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Pretty clear there. Neither is, excuse me, neither he that loveth not his brother. 
how do they know we're his disciples? Because of our love. Yeah, By our yeah, love, the way we love each other. Mute yourself. Mute yourself, please. Mute yourself. Thank you. How do they know that we are of God? Is because of our love. Our love for one another. Our love for souls. Wanting souls to be saved. Wanting to draw them in. That's how they know that we are of God. That's how they know we are his disciples. All right. Verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Let's go back. First uh, John. First John 4, 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So let's go back to what we just read. For this message, for this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. If you do not love your brother or your sister, you are not of God. You don't have God in you. How can you love someone you have not seen but hate the one that you have seen? It doesn't work. All right? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. He was jealous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. They're not going to like you. They don't like us now because we tell them stuff, something that they don't want to hear. People hate to be told that they're wrong. They hate it. Can't stand it. But when you do it in love, hopefully it is taken properly. But even then, because people don't like being told that they're wrong, they've been living wrong, they've been believing wrong, they will refuse the word of God. It happens. But it's, it is still our job to tell them. All right? Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. They, they will hate us. They hate us now. We still have to keep going. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Keep that in mind, y'all. Especially those that turn away souls because of lifestyles and those that are in sin, we're supposed to be drawing them in, not turning them away. We can't show them that we are disciples of Jesus if we're constantly turning them away and not showing them love in order to draw them in. We have to be worried about souls. We have to be going after souls. Those are still souls out there. No matter what the lifestyle is, those are still souls, souls that need to be saved. He said, I would that all men be saved. We're supposed to be going after these souls to save them. All right. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Hmm. And ye know that no murderer, excuse me, that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Anybody that's committing murder of any form doesn't have God in him. Because Jesus is eternal life and Jesus is God. As we explained in the two previous Bible classes, you can go back and review those. Verse 16, hereby perceive we the love of God. He is our example. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. God is our example of what love is. All right. God is our example. Jesus, who is God, is our example. Again, spirit cannot die. That's why he got in flesh. That's exactly why he got in flesh. Verse 17, but whoso, but whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? You see somebody have need and you have the opportunity to give to him, 
why not give it? Why not show them that love? You want somebody to do that with you. Why not show somebody else that love? Uh, my little children, let us not love in word. Words sound nice, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. God is a man of his word. He said he never leave us, and therefore he has stayed with us. We have to be the same way. I can't say I love you and have no action behind it. Love is an action word. We cannot say I love you and do nothing about it. Um, verse 19. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart or our mind condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not then have we confidence toward god and whatsoever we ask we receive of him if you abide in me and my word in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done again verse 22 and whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. If you abide in me and my word in you, the word is God. You can go back again and review those two Bible classes before now. I'm cutting close to my time, so I have to cut this short. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. You dwell in him, and he dwells in you. That's through the Holy Ghost. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit, again, the Holy Ghost, which he hath given us. When you receive it, you have to let it work. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you have to let it work. If you want to walk up right before God, if you want to see his face in peace, if you want to love your brethren as we should, as Christ loved us, you have to have the Holy Ghost and you have to allow it to work in you. That is my time, you all, because you only have so much on the free basic on Zoom. So I hope I've blessed someone. I hope you learned somebody something. I hope that somebody gained more understanding from what has been said um, if not, I'm still studying. I'm still learning. I still don't know everything just as I know that you don't know everything. If we did, we would not need the word of God. Hallelujah. You would not need it preached or taught to us. We are. We should always be in a constant state of learning. Those of you that are listening that may not be saved, our doors are still open for salvation. We may not have anybody here for Bible class right now, but I am certified to baptize you in the name of Jesus. And if I need help, it's nothing but a phone call. All right, our pool, I believe, is clean. We have clothes for men, women, children. We got stuff to protect your hair and everything, ladies. It's all right, but now is the time for you to be saved. Now is the time for you to be baptized in Jesus' name. Now is the time for you to receive the Holy Ghost. Now is the time for you to live holy and walk upright before God. Now is not the time to be scared. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Now is not the time to be scared. Now is the time you should be running to the church house, to the true church, not just any church. Go to the right church that's going to baptize you in Jesus' name so that you have the key to get into the kingdom. All right? And if you need the Holy Ghost, we will help you do that as well. Amen? All right, y'all. I will see you all Sunday. I'll see you all Sunday. Be blessed. Amen.